you are welcome to my channel. I'll be talking about hydroxy urea, hydroxy carbamate. Hydroxy urea is a mono hydroxy substituted urea called hydroxy carbamate. It is an anti metabolite. By nature, hydroxy urea is found endogenously in human blood plasma at concentration between 30 and 200 nanogram per mil. Adoturia could come under different brand names, Drosia, Letalia, Cyclos, Hydra, Adoxycarbamide, and Adoxyurea generi. Adoxyurea belongs to the class of medications known as antineoplastic agent, anticycline agent in sickle cell disease patient, an anti-metabolite, enzyme in beta, particularly cytochrome P450, and CYP2DC inhibition, also in nucleic acid synthesis in beta of DNA or RNA. Uses in melanoma, in chronic myelocytic leukemia, in inoperable ovarian cancer, primary squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck, in sickle cell disease. Still on uses in essential thrombocytemia, also in HIV as an adjunct therapy, psoriasis, polycytemia vera, and systemic mastocytosis. Adoceria could appear in various forms, in form of adoceria capsules, and in that case, I'm going to find capsules at 200 mg, 300 mg, 400 mg, or 500 mg. I saw the urea tablets, and in that case, we're going to find tablets at 100 milligram or 1000 milligram, making it to become one gram. Side effects bone marrow suppression and myelosuppression, carcinogenic, leukemia, thrombocytopenia, tumor lysis syndrome, anemia, hair loss, or alopecia. Still on side effects, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, cheese, cough, fever, constipation, or headache. The list continues to include dizziness, drowsiness, flu like syndrome, skin peeling, skin discoloration, gangrene, or even sometimes skin ulcer. Other side effects include renal failure. And that will lead to increased blood rare nitrogen or creatinine, acute pulmonary reactions, genetic mutations, blood tarristus, hematuria, mucositis, hypoglycemia, rashes, still on side effects, bruising or bleeding, sutures, worse dance of voice, dyspnea on exertion, hallucination, scissors. Others will include oligo or azosperm, peripheral neuropathy, hepatotoxicity that could be fatal or non fatal, teratogenicity, an account of which we would never give this in pregnancy, polyps or cyst formation, cutaneous vasculitis, and dermatomyositis. Mechanism of action. In sickle cell disease patients, it decreases the hemoglobin F and decreases the frequency of crisis. How come? The reason is the fetal hemoglobin, that is hemoglobin F, will not polymerize and will not deform the red blood cells like hemoglobin S we do. Also here, it also suppresses granulocyte production in bone marrow, thereby preventing immune response where occlusion had occurred in sickle cell disease patients. Still, a mechanism of action, hydroxycarbamide would decrease the production of the ribonucleotides by inhibiting ribonucleotide reductase. DNA replication is inhibited 
by disrupting the DNA replication of the fast-growing cancer cells, on account of which we use this as antineoplastic agent. Drug-drug interaction. I will advise that you contact your pharmacist or clinical pharmacologist, but I will not leave this page without this advice that please don't give adoseria with live attenuated vaccines. Please don't give. And if you are confused, what are the live attenuated vaccines? Well, you can check the literature. Intranasal flu vaccine is live attenuated, BCG, measles, mumps, rubella, oral polio, small pulse vaccine, typhoid rotavirus, varicella virus, yellow fever vaccine, Zusta vaccine, human papilloma virus vaccine are all categorized as live attenuated. One, can, should, and must be administered only by the physician who is experienced in the administration of adosiuria. In other words, this is not medication that could be prescribed by all physicians, no. There is likelihood of life-threatening adverse reactions, so we should have that at the back of our mind before administering this medication. Remember, it is carcinogenic to humans. Therefore, we need to monitor for the possible malignancies as may be required if we want to place anyone on this medication for a long time. Still on warnings, we can never give this medication in anyone less than two years old. Myelin suppression will preclude its use in known or suspected bone marrow suppression. In other words, once we know or we are taking a guess that there will be more bone marrow suppression, don't give this medication. Secondly, leukemias may occur in polycythemia vera or essential thrombocytemia when this medication is used on a long-term basis. Also, when it comes to protection against melanoma and other skin problems, the individual should have some protection and be monitored for malignancies. Still on warnings, we have to consider the benefits and risks of cancer before we use adoziuria. The chemogenic effect might be secondary to adoziuria itself or if there's any underlying condition in this patient that could tip the person to become you know, a cancer patient later on, we have to rule that out. Hence, anyone with a very high risk index for leukemia should not take adoziuria on a long-term basis. So, we must consider the benefits and the risk of cancer before commencing this medication. And also, we have to be sure that the patient is not having hepatic failure, no renal failure, and no bone marrow failure before the onset of the therapy. In anyone of childbearing age, or women of childbearing age, they must have contraception before they start the therapy because we cannot use adoziuria with pregnancy and no life alternative vaccines, please. You can rewind to check the list of life alternative vaccines that I've you know, given earlier. Contraindications. Have sensitivity to adoziuria or any components of its formulation would force us to take this medication off the table. In anyone with severe anemia, no adoziuria place. In bone marrow suppressed individuals, no adoziuria. If the white blood cell count is revealing leukopenia, no adoziuria place.
still on contraindications. I've decided to bring out pregnancy or breastfeeding again separately. But if you remember, under the warning, I've stated that, that we don't give this medication to pregnant women. As a matter of fact, any woman of childbearing age that's on this medication must be on contraception. Now, we should not be too rigid if this woman is pregnant already, and this is a life-threatening condition or so, some other conditions that are life-threatening, but adosuria will be helpful and she's pregnant, then we have to discuss with this woman and the OBGYN on the possibility of early termination of this pregnancy. If this is a term pregnancy or preterm, we can commence the induction of labor after the conversation because we weigh both the merits and demerits and then try to save the life of the mother with or without saving the life of the unborn baby. So depending on the age of the pregnancy, if this is close to time, we'll save both lives. If this is preterm, but not you know, the early part of preterm, that incubation could help, you know, intensive care unit, neonatal intensive care unit could salvage the situation, we'll go ahead, then we'll save both lives, right? But if this is early part of the pregnancy, then the outcome is going to be therapeutic abortion, right? So all this should be discussed with the woman and the OBGYN because we're out to save the life of the woman and the life of the, of the unborn baby if the situation will permit. But we cannot, because of the teratogenic effect of the adosuria, to then you know, lose the life of the mother and that of the unborn baby. In case of the breastfeeding mother, that is pretty easy. If that is the case, we'll discuss with the mother that we will introduce artificial milk so that you, the mother, can take adosuria right now. Monitoring, vital signs, and that will include blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, Temperature and the fifth vital signs now is pain. Human chronic gonadotrophin in all women of childbearing age because of the teratogenic effect of arosiguria. We don't want that woman to be pregnant, and that is why contraception will be in place. We have to rule out cancer risk in this patient because arosiguria could be carcinogenic on its own. And of course, cancer symptoms must be ruled out here. We must check complete blood count and knowing the value of white blood cells and platelets, because the tendency to bleed is very high here, and leukopenia will preclude the use of this medication. And remember, bone marrow suppression is a big problem already, and we don't give this medication in severe anemia. And of course, we have to do all this before, during, and after the therapy. We must check out for the signs of infection. Well, to quickly remind my listeners that that will include fever, chills, rigor, dysuria, vomiting, nausea, chest pain, cough, weakness, decreased appetite, and so on. And also, we have to check out for signs of bleeding. And that will include bruising, particular echemosis, telagentasia, frank bleeding like hemoptysis, or hematomesis, or hematochesia, and black teres tooth, melanous tooth. Also, TLS, tumor lysis syndrome. You can check my channel for full info on tumor lysis syndrome. Examples of where and when we can use adosuria will include sickle cell disease. And I'll divide that into sickle cell disease adult and children. In case of adult, 
We can give adosuria 15 mg per kilogram per hour once daily, and we may increase that by 5 mg per kilogram per day every three months. So you don't just increase the dosage anyhow. Every three months you are sex. You do know that's why I have gone through the monitoring parameters before getting into this. So you check then you might increase every three months by like that. But the maximum dose we are going for and we can now see it is 35 milligram per kilogram per day. Now another example is sickle cell disease now in children. Remember, I've gone through that of the adult, right? But we cannot give this medication in any child less than two years. No. So in a child two years and older, we can give this as 20 milligram per kilogram per hour once daily, and we may increase by five milligram per kilogram per day every two months. So every two months, we go over the monitoring parameters and see how we're winning or not. And if there's need to increase, it is after two months in children. We will give this until absolute neutrophic count is 2,000 to 4,000 microliter. Maximum dose is 35 milligram per kilogram per day. In head and neck cancer, we can give this as 15 milligram per kilogram per day per hour single dose. The oncologist will determine what will follow after. And that is why you have to refer all these you know, wonderful people with these different conditions to the respective specialist. In case of sickle cell disease, to hematologist. In case of head and neck cancer, to oncologist. With that, I've come to the end of this very presentation. Adosuria could be very helpful, but review the contraindications, the side effects, and now you can monitor. So, in order to save the life, we cannot take another one. In pregnancy, don't give this. As a matter of fact, in any woman of childbearing age, screen for pregnancy, human colonic gonadotrophin, and you can give contraception before the woman will start this therapy. Thanks for listening. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share. I appreciate it.